I've just done a little bit of light shopping and because I'm in the MX-5, I've kind of shopped light. Wow, there is more room in this MX-5 boot than I thought. Sales of sports cars generally are down by about 40%. Now oddly, the mix of MX-5s favours this RF hardtop version, the hardtop convertible version. And believe it or not, there's a majority of buyers that still prefer a manual over the MX-5 range, which I think is just extraordinary in a market where about 95% of car sales are automatics. So let's just run through exactly what's new in this car. The powertrain of the 1.5 and the 2.0-litre engine have been upgraded with a focus on the 2.0-litre engine. There's improved fuel injection, improved airflow intake, and it's now got 135 kilowatts and 205 newton metres. There is still no turbo. A little tiny one wouldn't have killed them. And there's a higher rev limit too, 7,500 up from 6,500. The engine sound has been modified by, of all things, a new flywheel, and the 1.5 is up one kilowatt and two newton meters. There's five star safety, a new sun visor, AEB and automatic wipers and lights. There's Nappa leather and a Bose sound system on the top RF. New wheels, 16 inch on the Roadster and 17 inch on this RF model. And the front's been tweaked too. There's still these beautiful lines of the headlights and the sculptured intake and I think these cutouts make these tail lights really stand out. There's new reverse sensors, a new reversing camera and this sexy twin exhaust. I think this is the best bum on a car I've ever seen. And the top model now has smart locking and unlocking which means with the key in my pocket I can just use the door handle to lock and unlock the car. All models have push button start and it's my pet hate when you've got to get the key out of your pocket to unlock but then be able to use the push button start. The cup holders are stored in this little bin. They fit either here or here, and they're now low wobble, although that still looks like high wobble to me. Finally, the steering wheel is now telescopic as well as adjustable for height. The best thing about the updates is the engine. All of the safety stuff obviously is brilliant too, but along with things like hill hold and autonomous emergency braking and all of the stuff that we've come to accept as standard in cars is now available in MX-5 and there's no longer any kind of compromise. Like all MX-5s of the past, this one's a lifestyle car and it's bought by people that want to get out and about and experience the fresh air like this. Along with changes that were made earlier in the year, the engine and transmission now feel a little bit perkier and a little bit more purposeful. MX-5 is completely practical for the people that buy it. The good thing about this is Apple CarPlay will be coming in due course. And we asked Mazda execs about that this morning. And they still don't have a word on price but they said that the parts are on their way so it's going to be here before Christmas which means anyone with this system will be able to have CarPlay in a Mazda. The dash and interior haven't changed in this car. The new flywheel has made the engine a little bit more raspy, a little bit sexier and a little bit more responsive. I'm going to rate Mazda MX-5 update at 9 out of 10. It is my favourite Mazda. It is my favourite convertible. It's value for money. MX-5 does everything it says on the box. And it is such a cutie. There we have it, Mazda's updated MX-5 range with all those brand new inclusions. 
This is my favourite car of all time. It's practical for those who buy it. It's a great price. It starts at under $40,000. As always, hit the little round button to subscribe.